So ladies and gentlemen, you know, as I was listening to uh, the other speakers, I realized, you know, that we really only have our, you know, personal history and how we come to the Latino community or to doing business uh, in the Latino community. And I feel like I'm one of those people who, you know, can say that if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And so, you know, I started out, I'm not really sure like why, I was a good student, but I won the Spanish prize in high school. So, you know, I get the, the best grade in Spanish. Uh, and, you know, I think, oh gosh, you know, maybe I can speak a little bit. So I, come, I came to Brown University, I go to school in Rhode Island, and my first job out of Brown University was making a whopping $6,000 doing domestic violence prevention work. Well, we were doing that in, uh, in Providence, and the market changed. It was uh, Buddy Cianci's first run, and real estate prices were going up, and you know, this small nonprofit couldn't afford to be there, so we moved to Central Falls. So there I am, having won the Spanish prize in high school, and I said, geez, you know, I should be able to go order lunch. So I started walking the street, Dexter Street and, and Broad Street, trying to try out my Spanish. And you know, it was then that I said to myself, I think I must have been Latina in a past life because I just love the people. I love the food, I love the culture, I love the cheesesteaks, the jokes. Uh, I realized I was probably the butt of many of those jokes, which is why I said, Jesus, I better really learn Spanish or they're probably talking about me. So it was sort of that you know, confluence, if you will, that I had studied Spanish, but we all know that studying a language and actually speaking it is a different thing. Um, but really in the streets of Central Falls, uh, largely initially from Colombians and later from Dominicans, uh, you know, I just became friends with them and I was so enticed by what they were saying that you know, I ended up actually being fluent in Spanish. And then, you know, as I said, we only really have the truth of our history. And I was, Yvonne was uh, reminding me of this when we were eating lunch together. And that is that one of my best friends in the world is a guy that I suppose many of you in here know, Alido Baldera. Everybody knows Al, everybody knows Al and everybody loves Al. So Alido Baldera used to have a nightclub called La Cabana Restaurant. And um, I don't know if I'm proud to say this or not, but I used to go there a fair amount. And, uh, then I discovered Latin dance, and I said, oh my God, how do you do that? You know, so eventually, they, uh, with great difficulty, I might add, they taught me how to dance. But I met Ivan in uh, La Cabana nightclub one uh, day, and he started talking about the radio station. And there I was, I'd already been a lawyer, and uh, you know, I spoke a little Spanish. And I will say that you know, when I first started with my law partner some 18 years ago, it was the two of us and one secretary. And today, we have 14 lawyers and upwards of 50 uh, personnel, and you know what? I owe a uh, you know big part of that to the uh, advertising we have done in the Latino community. So you know, I thank these guys for for putting this seminar on today, and really for all that you have done, you know, for me and for our business. Uh, when Yvonne finally convinced me to run a commercial, um, you know, the response was really great. Uh, you know, one of the things that I realized is that. You know, my law partner's name is Morasco. I'm Nestlebush. Neither one of us is, you know, Perez or Rodriguez. So our names were really difficult uh, for people. So what I realized is that, you know, people would come into my office having heard the commercials or whatever, and they would be like, La Bogada Dana, donde esta La Bogada Dana? So really, I have sort of picked up my name, La Bogada Dana, um, you know, from the community. I mean, you guys, you guys gave me that name. I didn't necessarily choose that name. But uh, I realized that that was much easier um, for people to remember. So actually, at this point, the advertising that, I, that we do do, um, we, we still do try to keep our brand out there as Morasco and Nestlebush, because I think hopefully some people uh, do know that name. Uh, but as well, it just seems to have been easier for Latinos. And so now I do uh, marketing as La Bogada Dana, um, which has also been very uh, successful for us. And one of the things that uh, happened, and again, I noticed that some of the other speakers were talking about, you know, when you're in the radio station, uh, you know, Yvonne, Cesar, you know, everybody, first off, they're always so happy. You know, I, you, nobody leaves that radio station without having like an uplifted heart. But, you know, they'll help you. And so at some point, you know, the response was really good to the commercials. Um, and sometimes people would actually call the radio station and say, you know, I missed that number. How do I get a hold of her? So Yvonne said, why don't you do a talk show? Why don't you do a, an actual show on the radio and answer questions? And so that was how Pregúntele a la abogada Dana, Ask Lawyer Dana, was born. 
And it was really shocking, you know, the first Saturday that we went on, you know, Saturday mornings at 9 o'clock, I mean, the number of people that would call and, you know, they would really, our specialties at Morosco and Nestlebush are auto accidents, medical malpractice, workers' compensation, and social security disability. But, you know, when you deal with humanity, you know, people have questions about landlord-tenant, divorce, uh, you know, so many other, the wills and trusts, so many things, business agreements. So, you know, though I am not uh, certified as an expert in any of those areas, obviously uh, I'm a businesswoman myself, have gone to law school, and so, you know, you can help people in a variety of different um, areas. So, you know, my experience at Latina 100.3, I mean, they, those guys are like family to me, and literally every Saturday morning, and this is, I was asked, you know, trying to figure this out with Yvonne, I think it's going almost on 10 years now. I think we started maybe in 2006 or 2007, and it is one of the joys of my week to be able to start my Saturday morning with DJ Gatto and my good friend and co-host Alido Baldera. Our show, um, it's just a joy for me. You know, I, I, I love to help people. Uh, it's a great thing to be able to give uh, folks who don't necessarily understand their legal problem even, um, but also to give them their next step, you know, even if it's not to go to our law firm, you know, to go to a friend's law firm uh, or, you know, some, whoever can help them solve their problem. Which leads me to just sort of say, you know, for those who are here to um, talk about Latino marketing, I didn't know those statistics. I was as kind of wowed by them uh, as anybody. I just know it has worked in our business and it has been a huge reason for our growth and success in the legal community. But clearly from the information that John gave and from our, you know, our knowledge, you watch TV over the presidential election, you know, Latinos and the Latino vote. So whether you're talking nationwide or here locally, you know, the Latino culture and market is uh, an exploding market. And, you know, I'm kind of happy to say, like, you know, I never really did it because I just wanted my business to grow. That was never my motive. I loved the culture. I loved, and really, the Latinos, you know, you guys all, you taught me Spanish because when I was first, uh, you know, a young lawyer and somebody would, I remember, um, John was saying that Puerto Ricans are the number one community here. And I remember a guy would come in and say, me duele la nuca. And I'd be like, la nuca. Nobody ever taught me that word in, you know, in, in, when I'm learning my classes. And it's not even, I don't even know if it's a real word. But it's how Puerto Ricans say neck, you know, me duele la nuca. So they, I would literally have to ask them, uh, speaking to those diff different cultures and what different words mean, I would say, you know, what is that? Uh, you know, say that slower, write it down. You know, what, is the, what, what are those words? Um, you know, so really, I, I'm fortunate that I came at this uh, from a love of the culture. And you couldn't be talking about any kind of marketing, I think, without saying, you know, the basics are, of course, you have to give something of value. If you don't have a good service, you know, thank God, uh, Frank sells Mercedes-Benz, obviously, it's a great car. But if you don't have a great car or you don't provide, you know, great equipment at the rent-a-center or you don't provide a good legal product, Forget about marketing it to anybody. So your first thing in talking about marketing is you have to have a great product. Um, and you have to give something of value. And you have to connect with your people. You know, I think um, if you just do something to try to sell a commodity, you know, good luck. I mean, I just think that what all of us as humans crave is that human connection and getting what it is that we need, you know. I noticed when you said, you know, how, how many here came in a car, who, dry, who has a car? Well, you know, I'd say the same thing. How many people here have ever needed a lawyer? Everybody needs a lawyer at some point in their life. It just sort of seems like um, that's the way it is. And so what I would say, uh, and something that I think about all the time with the Latino community, and they're an incredibly loyal community. And you know, initially, two clients told two more clients, four told four is 16, 16 times 16. I mean, our uh, Latin business grew exponentially. You know, not linearly, but exponentially. And Part of it, I think, is because something I say all the time, and that is, you know, client satisfaction is one thing. Client loyalty is everything. So you got to do something. you got to connect with your clients uh, so that they feel loyal and so that when they say, oh, gee, I need a new car, or oh, gee, I need a new television, or oh, gee, I need a lawyer, somebody is going out of their way to say, oh, God, I've got the... Say you know the car salesman for you. I've got the color time rent a center for you, or I've got the the lawyer for you. So. Um, I really will end with that because I think it is the most important, that client satisfaction, one thing, client loyalty is everything. Thank you so much for inviting me to be here today. Thank you.